This is like one of the biggest red flags. I really do think that this one is extremely important. The day gets a little bit juicy as we explore red flags in dating that you cannot afford to ignore. Make sure you watch the entire video because I'm going to be spilling the beans on some experiences that I've had. We've all been there when we've liked someone so much that we just make excuses for their behavior and we call really obvious red flags personality quirks. I'd say in general, I'm a pretty good judge of character, but I have definitely got caught up a few times and ignored some pretty major red flags, which led me down a very long road of life lessons and unneeded needed pain. So don't feel bad if that is you as well. We've all been there. I previously did a great video on green flags that you should be looking out for when you're trying to find your person or maybe you're reassessing the relationship that you're in. If you'd like to check that out, I'll put the link out there, there. So these red flags are important for like every age group to look out for, but I will say this is coming from the perspective of my life experience and now being in my mid thirties. One disclaimer, these red flags are not in order of importance. I think they are all important. And by no means is this an exhaustive list. This video could have at least been two hours long, but I wouldn't do that to you. I am very, very sure that we will circle back to this topic again and again. Red flag number one, lack of interest. Sometimes we ignore this particular red flag because we think oh, maybe they're just playing hard to get. You know who you are. Or you're thinking, you no, know, they just need to warm up to me a little bit more. And coming from someone who I feel like I'm the sort of person that does need to warm up to someone, there's gonna be a point where it does become clear that that person is just not interested in you. And I know we also have the element of the thrill of the chase, and I love that more than anyone, trust me. But you know what, it does become a little abnormal if the person is consistently not texting you back, they're ignoring your calls, they are perhaps giving closed or vague responses, or they're just not actively interested in your life. And they clearly show that they have no intention of getting to know you. This has happened to everyone and it sucks and it hurts, but it's really important that we don't hang on to false hope because we're just gonna get stuck. Now I can only speak from my experience as a woman and I'm hoping that my Club 30 fam are going to back me up here. But there was a massive rom-com that got released. I feel like it was in the early-ish 2000s, but it had like Justin Long in it and like Jennifer Aniston, Ben Affleck. Now there was a twist at the end that kind of contradicted the name of the movie, but the premise of the film was actually really accurate. At least when it comes to my experience talking to guys. If a guy likes you, ladies, he will make the effort to talk to you. Men are very simple like that, at least most men are. I have met some more complicated ones who like to play games, but usually if a guy does wanna to get to know you, then he will actually make that happen. If he's not giving you any green light that he's interested, then I'm sorry, but it's time to move on. In general, whoever you are, if you are sensing a lack of interest and it does not improve, chances are that is a definite red flag and you need to be setting your sights on somebody else. Red flag number two, they are not interested in personal growth. For me, this is not just a red flag. It is a massive, massive turnoff. If someone you're talking to, or maybe you're even in a relationship with them, if they don't have any interest to grow as a person, then your relationship is going to have a very, very low ceiling, meaning it's not gonna grow past a very shallow level. I've actually seen this happen a lot in relationships that people started in their 20s and they end up ending it in their 30s, even marriages. And usually it's because the guy or girl just does not make the efforts to change, to evolve, to grow, even to mature. In those situations, a lot of times one person will grow way past the other and the entire relationship will just remain completely stuck. Now, if you want to guarantee yourself a life of boredom, dissatisfaction and mediocrity, then definitely find yourself someone who does not prioritize personal growth. Number three, gaslighting. Oh, the room just went quiet. Now in my view, this is like one of the biggest red flags. I really do think that this one is extremely important and definitely a red flag that everyone should be watching out for. Honest to God, if you see this in a person that you're trying to date or maybe you're even in a relationship with them right now, I suggest you run. Run. Here are common phrases that a gaslighter will use on you. I never said that. I did that because I love you. I don't know why you're making such a huge deal of this. You're just being overly sensitive. Gosh, you're being so dramatic. But <laughs> you're the issue here, not me. If you loved me, you would. You are crazy. I have been around people who have severely gaslit me well before this became a well-known term. And I was a broken person when 
these situations happened and I had a lot going on in my life. I was definitely not the person I am today. And I honestly really didn't see it for what it was. Sometimes you need people around you who can be more subjective than you. If you suspect this red flag, you really need to go to someone that you trust and ask for their honest opinion and feedback from what they've seen and what they've heard. It's super easy to miss this red flag, especially if you're very involved in the relationship or you're really into them or you care a lot. It's so easy for this to be missed. Gaslighting is one of the most toxic and draining traits in any relationship, whether it be platonic or romantic. And rarely the person who's doing the gaslighting, rarely will they change. Do not wait around for that change to happen. Trust me, because they will end up crushing you, taking all your self-esteem. They will make you question everything you believe to be true about yourself and honestly just rip you to shreds. Take it from me. This is one of the most important red flags to be aware of and also to run from. And I implore you, if any of what I've just said rings true, then I would strongly encourage you to consider breaking it off and running. Number four, controlling behavior. A controlling person can present in a number of different ways. They control how you spend your time. They control who you see. They control what you wear. They criticize you all the time and they keep score. Now, gaslighting does fall into this general category, but it was too important to not call it its own red flag. Sometimes controlling behavior can initially come across as care or love. For example, I can't stand being away from you. I just want to be with you all the time. When you smile, I want to be the reason that you smile, not because of someone else in the room. Are you sure you want to wear that? Honestly, you'll probably find an element of controlling behavior in most, if not all of these red flags. But it's important that you are aware of how it can initially present itself in either you talking to someone, dating, or in a full-blown relationship. Number five, they don't allow you to have friends of the opposite gender. Ooh, no, she didn't. Yes, I am definitely bringing this. This red flag hits very close to home because I've had a lot of friendships either end or dramatically change because my friend's girlfriend either forbids it or sabotages it. We can debate another time the ins and outs of whether you should have respectful opposite gender friendships, but you know, I have to be honest, if a guy or girl who's been on the scene for like five minutes tries to outlaw and destroy a friendship that you've had for a number of years, then that's just a big ass red flag. When you enter into a committed relationship, friendships will usually change. That's very normal. And honestly, any sane, mature friends, guy or girl, will understand that and evolve with the relationship. But if you're with a guy or girl who seeks to manipulate and manage all the relationships in your life, including your friendships, then do us all a favor and cut them off, please. Run. Because the root reason that they're trying to do that is to gain control. And also it comes from a root of severe insecurity. Now, some people can argue that sometimes this happens if the other person you're in a relationship with has been cheated on or something has happened. But you know, maturity is knowing that just because that happened then, you can't paint everyone with the same brush. I don't really see this as an excuse to control or sabotage or destroy friendships. I've been the subject of interest of many girlfriends that I've never met, even though with a guy that they're with who is my friend, I've been incredibly respectful. I don't cross like certain lines and I also don't expect things to be the same as they were. <laughs> it's just petty and dramatic and honestly, those types of girls or if it's a guy, they need to go to therapy and just work out their insecurities there. If you enjoy my content, you would like to support the channel, then please make sure that you press that subscribe. And also liking and sharing this video goes a super long way to showing YouTube that people want to see more of Tori Grace. For those of you who are interested in getting a little bit more exclusive access to me and maybe hearing some more intimate personal updates, then I have also created a Patreon that you can join, which I'll put the link. Down below. Number six, self-interest. If a guy or girl is all about them and if they're forever talking about themselves and they never ask you questions, which ironically is a green flag we discussed in the last video, then they gotta go. Self-interest is never attractive and it's certainly not a sign of healthy confidence. If you are speaking to someone in the hopes to actually date them and they have asked you hardly anything about yourself, don't think that's gonna change when you start dating them. It's not. Self-interest is literally defined as one's personal interest, especially when pursued without regard for others. This means basically they don't actually care about you. I'm sorry. 
and they are just looking to fulfill the needs that they have. I have often seen guys keep talking to girls even though they have expressed to me that they're definitely not interested and they have absolutely no intention of getting into a relationship with them or bringing it further. They just keep talking to the girls because they're bored and I guess they want a little bit of validation. That's so common. Do not be a victim of that. Because if a guy or girl is just self-interested, they're just going to use you up for what they need and then they're gonna throw you away and move on. Self-interest can present in a number of small ways at the beginning. So when you're first talking to someone or you've just begun to date them, here are some simple signs to watch out for. They are allergic to compromise, meaning they will never meet you halfway. Sacrifice is not a word that features in their vocabulary. They are all about what they want and what they need. They will always have an agenda, even if it looks like they're doing something nice for you. There's always a reason behind it. It is so important to be aware of this red flag so that you can try and avoid unneeded heartbreak. Red flag number seven, they don't respect your boundaries. Now we all have different boundaries, whether emotional, physical, mental, sexual, the list goes on. If you are finding that the person you are talking to, or maybe you're already in a relationship with them, if they are trying to pressure you or coerce you to crossing lines that you've clearly set, not only for yourself, but for the relationship, then it's time to get the heck out of Dodge. Someone who has no respect for boundaries can oftentimes look like this. They pressure you to do physical and sexual things that you make clear that you wouldn't do. Ladies, if a guy is trying to force himself on you, then I would really encourage you to go tell someone. Go tell a friend, a parent, someone that you trust, because that is never, never okay. They can also ask you too many personal, intimate questions. They also don't respect your time. And the big one, they don't take no for an answer. This red flag is rooted in disrespect. If someone you are talking to, dating, or in a full-blown relationship with, if they are not respecting your own boundaries, that person has literally no respect for you. I can guarantee the relationship is going to end in heartbreak. Or if you choose to stay in the relationship, you're going to end up being exceptionally unhappy and broken. Number eight, jealousy. Did you know that jealousy is a combination of anxiety, fear, anger, and insecurity? My dad used to actually tell me that jealousy is one of the number one killers of any relationship. It doesn't even have to be a romantic one. This can very oftentimes happen in friendships as well. Jealousy and envy can rear its ugly head in any human relationship that you have. And it certainly can happen with the girl that you are head over heels for or the guy that you're so into. Someone who is jealous is often extremely insecure, even if they come across as the most confident person in the room. The controlling behavior that we talked about in the previous red flag is often a result of jealousy. And a lot of times it can look like this. They don't like it when you hang out with your friends. They call you names, even if they're trying to play it off as like, you know, harmless fun. They get mad when anyone tries to talk to you in public. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen this in like a club or a bar, but I have seen this so much when someone comes up to a guy's girlfriend and the boyfriend absolutely flips out. Walking red flag right there. They also will get angry and punish you if you don't reply to phone calls or messages straight away. And they don't like it when you're talking about their past simply because it does not include them. They can also talk bad about you to your friends and your family. I'm gonna just be real with you. Chronic jealousy in any relationship can rarely survive. So if you catch that kind of vibe from someone early on, save yourself the pain and just leave. So I would love to know Honestly, what are some red flags that you have encountered in relationships you've been or people that you talk to? If you would like to check out the green flags video of everything that you need to look out for when you're trying to find your person, then make sure you click on the video. 